Um, super excited uh, to host this uh, this wonderful group here on this panel. Um, today's topic, I can't believe we're already in May. So this would be you know our, our fifth webinar this year. Um, this one we're going to be focusing on beyond tickets, building innovative revenue streams. Um, so super excited for this panel. Um, for those that maybe are on this call that are, are a little less familiar with FIVO, um, you know, FIVO is helping the world's biggest brands, these guys and you all reimagine online shopping by making it super easy to check out by making every e-commerce site a social and interactive destination. Um, so, um, you know, again, um, wanted you all to meet the panel. Uh, I'm Eric, I've uh, been with FIVO for almost seven years, which is which is pretty wild. Um, I uh, manage most of our non-sports and traditional sports partnerships. So it's everything from you know festivals to uh, our touring partners and family entertainment. Um, super excited to um, for you all to to meet this cast that we have today. Um, and, and I'll go in order. Connor, um, if you can give a, a quick uh, summary and introduction, that'd be great. Yeah, thanks, Eric. Uh, Connor Whalen, Associate AD for Fan Experience and Sales at Mississippi State. Uh, I've been at Mississippi State for two years. I oversee our marketing, fan experience, digital strategy, and ticket sales here. Uh, and prior to Mississippi State, I was at uh, Wake Forest, Louisiana Lafayette, and Arkansas. Originally, roots are uh, are from the Northeast up in Pennsylvania, but I've spent uh, my, my professional life in the South. Awesome. Thanks, Connor. And Dan? Uh, absolutely. Similar to, to Connor, uh, I oversee our ticket sales, our marketing, our fan experience. Uh, I've been with the Atlanta Dream for about two years now, uh, just over that. And before that, I spent a lot of time uh, in, in, in pro sports with three other teams, and, as well as an agency. And in that time, I've done a, I've been spent most of my career in the digital uh, content and performance marketing landscape. So coming up in a, in a really rapid growth area here with the dream right now and and uh, in a very exciting time in the WNBA. So it's very exciting. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Cool. Thanks, Dan. And Chris, why don't you round things off here? Uh, well, first off, thank you for having me with this distinguished panel. You know, I'm, I'm humbled to say that I've been a two sport athlete and within pro and amateur sports for 26 years now, having represented a lot of Vanguard and Apex brands within their niche. And currently, I'm COO of uh, an incredible brand called Flexwork Sports. It's a brand development uh, event management space. And, you know, we're, we're doing incredible <clears throat> things, upgrading lives each step of the way. So I'm um, very excited to share knowledge of, of past successes and failures to, to help position the, the present and future of business to be better than all of us. Cool. Thanks, Chris. Um, you know, I, I wanted to add this slide, um, you know, just to kind of reemphasize, you know, all the different ways Vivo could be used, right? Um, we'll cover um, uh, some of these, but I just want to touch on, you know, the variety of, of, of different ways, um, you know, our, our platform could be used. Today, we'll, we'll really talk on, on the first one, you know, utilizing the add-ons. We won't really cover bundles and travel packages too much today, but, you know, really focusing on upgrades and add-ons and, you know, in terms of how to add those revenue streams into your business. Um, we'll touch on digital promotions as well. Um, and then kind of into the hospitality VIP experiences, you know, other ways that kind of falls into that add-ons, but, you know, how to heighten and elevate that, um, that experience that those fans have at your, um, at your events. Wanted, you know, I don't want to spend too much time here, but, you know, obviously with FIVO, uh, a lot of partners using us for those additional distribution opportunities, which we call our exchange program with Costco, City Entertainment and others. Presale lo loyalty and sponsorship opportunities. Traditionally, you know, group ticketing, right? That's where we get we got started. Um, and then flexible payment options that we continue to evolve and iterate on to making it super easy to, you know, for fans to check out. And then, um, you know, the ambassador program, this is coming soon. One of the, you know, the things that, that I just really love about FIVO, you know, is, is the ability to collaborate and talk through new initiatives with our partners. Um, you know, I'm, I'm excited to have Chris here that's focused purely on kind of the, um, um, Chris, what would you call, you know, your business? Because you're you focused know, I, I, really I on sport I camps. Yeah, a lot of the things uh, we're going to cover today are, are on-site grassroots sales. 
Cool. You know, not only creating on-site activation, but how do you create downstream revenue opportunities? Whether you have a lemonade stand or, you know what, you're an Apex brand like Flexwork Sports on a global level, supporting the most pro athletes. Um, yep. And, and, you know, one of the things that I get really excited about and, you know, where I focus on is, you know, on the festival and music and, and touring partnerships, there's a lot of creative ideas that they are bringing to the table. And so I really love these webinars. And I think we'll do a lot more of this moving forward and kind of bringing in, um, you know, the variety of people that are, are creating these experiences and selling tickets um, and basically sharing those best practices. So, you know, super excited. This ambassador program is something we're working on with our festival partners, but I think there's something there, you know, to be said that um, some sports teams could utilize as well. So agenda today, um, you know, first um, with, with Connor and Mississippi State, the a la carte add-on experiences. Uh, second, you know, the game day bundles with a dream, and then uh, looking at Flexwork Sports, really, you know, looking at everything that they do, but also kind of the at venue upgrades and experiences that they um, uh, look to offer those uh, attendees. So uh, Connor, we'll kick things off, um, you know, creating memories with an a la carte game day experience, maroon memories. This is, you know, a phenomenal pro uh, program that you've, you've kicked things off. And if anyone has a chance, check it out online and just the variety of experiences that you are putting forth to, you know, your patrons, it's really impressive. Um, would love for you to kind of just, you know, kick things off and give us, give a summary of, you know, what you're doing today, you know, how you started, where things are going uh, with Maroon Memories. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Eric. And, you know, for, for those of you that, you know, want to actually interact with it, you can go to hailstate.com slash memories. Um, we've left some things up there just so that you can kind of, you know, interact with the site and play with it a little bit. But, I'll kind of go back to the beginning. So Maroon Memories has been a program at Mississippi State for a long time. And essentially high level, it is a game day add-on experience. So that might be photos on the field. That might be a video board message. I think a lot of us that are you know part of team marketing um, might do something similar to this or are looking for a solution to manage something similar to this. And so, you know, I certainly can't take credit for starting the program. We've had this for a long time. Uh, it was extremely successful for us leading up to COVID and actually helped fund a, a full-time position. Um, but, but COVID changed things. And so the program, uh, it had gotten crushed. So, you know, 2021 was a little bit similar. Um, we didn't know we'd have fans in the venue till right before the season started. So the program was pretty much dormant in 21. And to kind of set the stage a little bit, we were using an application to manage Maroon Memories that was similar to our kids club. So in 2022, it was important for us to try and recapture those ancillary revenues. So we relaunched the program, but again, using that app that we had always used. The two problems with the app were number one, it was an external site that doesn't integrate into Sidearm for us, which is our web provider. So we needed to redirect the customer off of our site, which was a little bit problematic. Uh, and the second piece was you needed to log in to even see the offerings. So, you know, if you were just sort of browsing the store or you wanted to browse the store, uh, that login was a barrier to entry. And so for us, you know, I give credit to Spencer McAnally on our team. He wanted to bring the program in-house using Fivo so that you could easily see all the offerings and add multiple offerings to your cart. Uh, everything would live, you know, integrated into our web page. So um, that that was a big success, obviously, and made the, the shopping process, if you will, a little bit easier. So like I said, last year, we made that switch from the previous app that we had to Fivo being our provider. And, and you know, the other thing that I'll add to that app was expensive, you know, and so I think that, you know, probably all of us, like I said, that are in team marketing have used different external apps um, to manage these types of different programs. And so switching to Fivo, I think, was a much more cost-effective solution for us as well. But we've had huge success on that front. Um, you know, and on the part of, you know, how we implement a game day add-on, it, it's an entire external operation. So you obviously need your ticket team to understand what add-ons are available. Uh, they get questions at the box office, which they inevitably will. You know, you need your game ops team to understand and approve, you know, restricted access spaces. So, um, you know, really you need everybody to be aligned from the very beginning in terms of what you're trying to accomplish. And of course, not all of your, you know, maroon memories or add-ons are going to get approved. You know, we, we had a couple that, you know, we had extensive discussions about that didn't get approved. 
Um, you know, and that's okay. That's why you need that alignment to make sure that nobody's sort of caught off guard on game day. Um, and, and I would tell you the, the last kind of piece of this that I think is important, you know, whenever you're creating a program like this, I think our team does a good job of making sure that this is not just an add on money grab. And that, you know, for us, these experiences don't take away from the overall fan experience. So I'll give you a good example. You know, I think in the, you know, some instances I've seen where you do like birthday shout outs, right? And they'll make it all one slide. And it's, you know, a list of eight birthdays, 10 birthdays, whatever the case may be. I think for us, what we really wanted to accomplish was making sure that we could accomplish some of the video board add-ons while also leaving fan shots up. So we're kind of doing two things at once, right? Everybody's attention is on the video board. They're looking at the fan shots, you know, during a media timeout and we're running and circulating, you know, happy birthday to this person, you know, happy first game to that person, happy anniversary, welcome back to Mississippi State, et cetera. So I think we've tried to, you know, use that as a pseudo advertisement for us as well. Um, but ultimately to kind of sum it up, Fivo this this past year, you know, making that switch from our previous app provider to Fivo to sort of help manage this program has been a huge success for us. Mm. Thanks, Connor. Like one of the things that I think about too is just the pricing element too, right? On um, you know, thinking about all the different experiences that you can offer and, and how to price those and how important it is to offer a variety of pricing and different options for, you know, your, your different fans. So I don't know if you can talk through a little bit more about how you price that originally, has that evolved and just like the different range and pricing options for these experiences? No. Yeah. Great question. And, you know, for us, it's all going to be variable based on the game. Right. And so like we're in baseball season right now, uh, if we play a midweek opponent, you know, that's maybe not as high profile, you know, our memories probably, you know, if they're the same on Tuesday as they are on Saturday, it's probably going to be cheaper on Tuesday if we're playing, you know, an SEC opponent on the weekend, you know, relative to who we're bringing in on the midweek. Same thing from a football perspective. So, you know, next year, 2024, we open up the season with Eastern Kentucky and Toledo, you know, playing those two opponents relative to playing Florida the following week, right? Um, obviously, the prices are going to be a little bit cheaper, uh, you know, depending on the opponent. Um, the, the one thing that I will tell you that has been important for us is we've tried to keep it, uh, we, we've tried to keep the entry level price points pretty low to sort of get people bought into the program and recognize the value that exists there. And so I look at it kind of like selling tickets, right? We're trying to get people on the price escalator and then slowly move them up. So from a, you know, baseball happy birthday perspective, you know, $20, you know, it's a pretty low barrier to entry, um, you know, and that slowly moves up. So, you know, you want a photo on the field at baseball, $40, you want to deliver second base or have your kid deliver second base, $50. And there's much more premium options. So, you know, with football prior to the team taking the field, we have what's called the bully card. It's this doghouse that our mascot rides on the back of, you know, he leads the team out and uh, you can actually ride inside the bully card for $350. Um, I don't know that I would personally do that because it gets very hot in the bully cart, but uh, it is certainly a unique experience that, you know, people, people obviously enjoy. We sell it every game. So, you know, that's been really positive. Um, and then we, you know, we have other premium op opportunities like, you know, engagements, you know, on a non game day is $350 and on a game day is $500. You know, we did a, an engagement last year um on the field during the Alabama football game and it was a massive success again when we talk about trying to not only use that maroon memory to you know create an additional revenue stream we're also trying to add value overall from the fan experience perspective and so you you throw that up on the board uh and it's a huge success so I mean what I would tell you Eric is for us it is constantly a variable process of looking at a number of different factors. Number one, we want to make sure that we have a low entry level point that people can get in the door, uh, get sort of ingrained in this process again, because really this past year is the first year of the relaunch, like the real relaunch, in my opinion, with FIBO, the whole, you know, flow process looking a little bit different. Um, and then the second piece, you know, just looking at who our opponent is, um, who the opponents relative to that date are, because, you know, if we have a long streak of good opponents and maybe, you know, a lesser one in the middle, we might try and tweak some things around to get more people to buy different opportunities. 
Um, so I think that's important. And then the final piece of it is there's a scarcity issue for some memories, right? Like the bully cart's a great example. We can only put two people in there. So, you know, a, a maroon memory like that, we have the opportunity to increase the price a little bit more than a birthday message where we have essentially unlimited inventory, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Thanks, Connor. Uh, I want to remind uh, anyone listening in, feel free to, you know, push any questions into the chat and we'll make sure, you know, we can ask those throughout the call or, or at the end as well. Uh, Connor, got one more question. It's kind of twofold. I'm curious, was there any surprises with some of those experiences that sold more than you expected? You know, what were some of those um, experiences that are kind of, you know, the, the highest demand? And then um, was kind of more curious about, you know, how you get those in front of fans as well. And has that evolved um, in terms of making sure, you know, those attendees are aware of these additional experiences and, and how you connect those dots? Yeah, I think, you know, for us, again, that work in sports, we probably take some of these things for granted. But I, I think the things that have done really well for us, the football stadium tour, we call it Friday Night Lights, like the night before a big football game, right? Particularly, you know, in a town like Sarkville, Mississippi, where, you know, it, it is obviously not a very big town. And so there's not a ton to do in the nearby vicinity. So to have that opportunity is really, really cool. But I also think anytime you can bring people down onto the fan or down onto the field, um, that's something that resonates really well for us. So, you know, we've done photos on the field, VIP sideline passes, the opportunity to come down onto the field during our third quarter sequence, which is a, you know, tradition here, which is sweet dreams. Um, photos with Dak, our live Bulldog mascot, who is, you know, uh, harder to maybe see just out in public, generally speaking. So, you know, I'll give you one. I told you the um, engagement story. I, I, another cool story from football season this past year. You know, we uh, we had a parent buy a halftime room memory to come watch their daughter, who was a twirler in the band. You know, and so I think it's little things like that, right? Where you get to add some really cool value. Um, and again, try not to take some of those things for granted because uh, people really gravitate towards it. And outside of the football space, you know, the one thing I will tell you that's done really well for us is batting practice at baseball. Um, if you're familiar with college baseball, you know, we play at Duty Noble Field, um, one of the most iconic venues in the sport. Um, you know, it's the biggest college baseball stadium in the country, and our fan base for baseball is, is pretty dang rabid. So, um, you know, the batting practice experience, similar to what you see at major league venues, has been a huge, huge success for us. Um, our baseball coach was, you know, the guy that wanted to kind of lead that charge because he wanted the opportunity to shake people's hand and engage with the fans. And so um, that's another opportunity for us that we've seen do really, really well this spring. Mm. That's well, great. Thanks, well. Connor. We did get one question in here uh, from Tori. Um, I thought this would be relevant if you could answer. Um, how do you approach selling these? Is it mainly digital email web or do you push these through your group sales team? I know there's a lot of group sales um reps on, on the call as well so um would love to hear from you on that great great question we actually typically don't push them through our group sales team uh because they're not commissioned for them. so what i would tell you it's a couple of different things number one anytime we have a visible maroon memory we want to make sure that we are actively putting hailstate.com slash memory so like for example if you pay to have your birthday on the board or you want a special video board shout out Underneath in very big letters is going to be hailstate.com slash memories. So that's a pretty, pretty important piece for us. I also think from a from a social media perspective, you know, on football in particular, we'll go live with memories on Tuesday of game week. So we'll put a tweet out and say, hey, you know, memories are now live. And again, some of those things are a little more scarce than others. Um, and so I think, you know, people will try and get in on there on Tuesday and, and buy those ones that, you know, there's not going to be unlimited inventory. So, so that's important. And then the final piece from an email perspective, you know, particularly as it relates to football, we have a ton of game day information, you know, communications that we're constantly pushing. And so that's always just a, a banner ad on there that, hey, if you want, you know, X, Y, Z opportunity at football this Saturday, click on this link, we'll redirect you right to our site and you're able to purchase there. So I would tell you that we touch almost all those things, but we don't, you know, in our case specifically, don't go through our group sales team. Cool. That's great. Connor, this is awesome. Thanks for sharing. Um, I want to make sure we we have some time here for, um, oops, covering the rest. Um, thank you, Connor. Uh, Dan, um, 
what a time to be a part of the WNBA. Um, excited to kind of hear more about some of the things you've done, you know, in the past and, and what you're looking to do in the future, specifically, you know, enhancing the game day experiences with fan friendly initiatives. Um, if you can jump right in, that'd be great. Yeah, well, I'll start here. It, it is definitely a uh, very, very exciting time to be in this league. Um, and it's it's really kind of crazy. And this is one of the kind of the, the real success stories. But we're uh, so we had a basically an ownership shift uh, a little over two close to probably close to three years ago now. And uh, what we stepped into uh, with that group and um, and our team president worked with myself at the Atlanta Falcons prior to this. So when she came over, she brought me in. Uh, the situation we inherited was was very, very interesting. We we did not have CRM. We did not really we had no pictures of fans in the stands. We, we didn't have much of anything. And it was um, it was very interesting. You know, so it was really, really like op operating in a startup. So one of the things that we wanted to do was um, our, for growth. Uh, our growth means getting as many people into the process as possible and, and basically creating an environment where great ideas thrive. And so my background, again, in digital media and content, you know, the creative process is really important. So what we wanted to do was create a, a very collaborative environment, but all be pointed in the same direction in terms of what are the challenges we're facing and what are we trying to solve for and what is the the end game, what is the end result or what is what does success look like at the end of the road and make sure that everybody was trying to go in the same direction. So one of the one of the I think the core principles of this space in, of, of marketing today is insights before ideas. And so one of the things we wanted to do was, you know, get really good insights come up with some good hypotheses for why those things were working against some of the challenges, test some things very quickly, and then understand what was working and why, and then optimize over time. And so this was one of the products that really came from that. And so in the early days, as we were starting this thing up, uh, we were running just a bunch of ticket ads. And um, one of the things that, that kind of popped in, the, in, the, in that year one was we had basically like an ad, I think it said something like uh, calling all girl dads. And it had a click-through rate that was just way past anything else that we were running at that time. And so um, we just started, you know, talking through like, hey, what does this mean in terms of, you know, what, what is driving this? And there's obviously a lot of, you know, emotional connection to kids and, and wanted to have create memories with them. And at the same time, you know, as we were starting up that first season in 2022, one of the things that we quickly identified was our game experience was the best asset we had in terms of creating new fans. And so one of the things that we knew in, in terms of it was going to be important in terms of growing the fan base was how many people could we get into that arena and how many, especially first time buyers, could we make that their first impression for? So the kind of the combination of all those things, um, we started talking through like, hey, how do we turn what we saw in terms of the reaction on this ad into something that gets a lot of first time buyers into that arena and really starts to reshape the perception of who we are, of, of fandom in our, our building. And so we came up with this and it's kind of funny. I met Kara from FIBO, I think on my third or fourth day with the dream, she happened to stop into the office. And um, one of the things, like I said, one of the things we wanted to do was we wanted to come up with a lot of ideas. We wanted to break out of silos. We didn't want sales team just selling products over here and marketing, doing things over here and fan experience, just trying to figure out like, you know, what the game themes, you know, what they're going to, what the presentation is going to look like for game themes. We wanted to start to have more collaborative conversations across these groups. And you can't really do that if you're only selling, you know, on Ticketmaster or you're only selling season tickets or these partials. A lot of those ideas aren't really getting to be discussed very much. So as as Kara was, you know, showing us what this what FIBO could do, immediately it hit me. I was like, oh wow, okay, we can we can create a lot of different products, a lot of different experiences, and we can test a whole bunch of things really, really quickly. And then using, you know, especially at that time, paid social, we can test what the reactions are. So I think the very so we put this one together in in you know collaboration with the facility group at our arena, with our fan experience group, with our our ticket sales team, and with marketing, and we basically put this package together that was okay. We're going to give you a fan experience. You can take a picture with your kid on the court after the game. Um, you're going to get a you're going to be able to get either matching shirts or pick the shirts that you guys want. And we're only going to do that for the first 50 buyers, so a little bit of a scarcity play there and an urgency. And we put this product together. We ran about two or three of these things out at the same time. And this one just took off immediately on day one. I mean, every time we refreshed, we were getting more purchases and it was, and we only used 
So this became in 2023, our top selling single game driver and it became uh, our, our best of, the, of these kind of fan experiences that went beyond just single game tickets. And so this was just a true success story for us. It really helped us. We, we led the league last year in sellouts. And I would say three of those sellouts would not have happened if it was not for this package. We put this on a lot of our weaker games where it's not as, you know, it's the matchup isn't as great or the night of the week isn't as great. And you need a bigger hook to get new people in the building. And this thing has been uh, kind of a runaway train for us. And so it it is, we put it up again this year and it is, it's going to significantly outdo what it did last year. And we don't do any marketing for this outside of, paid social and it just keeps Incredible. it's it's our best driver of new fans in the building uh it, about 85 percent of the people that buy are new fan our are, are first-time buyers for us it is our highest return on ad spend and it is uh it is it, quite honestly the pictures that we get of these parents and their kids on the court after the game are gold for us so it's it's just been a a, a really big thing and it's it's i right now it's the embodiment of what we want growth to be here where we have good ideas coming from all corners of the organization and really good, a really good collaborative environment. And, and so this is one that we hold up for, for a lot of reasons. Hmm. That's great, Dan. Um, you know, you hit on one thing that I think a lot of people uh, here on this call maybe struggle with, right? It's like con finding that connectivity across different departments to work together, whether or not it's from the, you know, in-game fan experiences to marketing to sales. Um, I don't know if you had any recommendations or any thoughts or, or feedback on, you know, how to bring everyone together, you know, to, to kind of have that North star, uh, together. Um, if there's anything that you can touch on that's been successful on your end there. Yeah, absolutely. And this, this goes back, you know, a couple of jobs back. Um, I, I, I was working at an agency where we had a leader that was just, it was the best I, I've ever seen at getting, uh, very diverse people with the very diverse backgrounds and experiences all going in the same direction. And I, and I learned a lot um, from that leader, but I think the biggest thing that was part of it was uh, that person made everyone on the team, everyone on a broad team that had very, could have been very competing motivations, realize that what was good for one group or one person was good for everybody. And he really painted a, uh, a, a vision or a, a picture of success that everybody could buy into. And so I've used a lot of that over time. I, I think, you know, obviously in my last job, I was uh, overseeing uh, digital strategy and content with the Atlanta Falcons. So the creative process was a big part of it. So one of the things that we do is like, you know, I, I mentioned earlier insights before ideas. We want to make sure that everybody has the same definition of success before we walk in the room. And, and there's a common, uh, a common effort or something that we're trying to achieve together and that we're all working from the same insights. And I, you know, I, I, not to go down a, a, a long path here, but one of the biggest wastes of times that I saw when I was working in, on the agency side was, just throwing a brainstorm together and getting a lot of people in the room who didn't have the same definition of success and who weren't working off of the same kind of human insights or whatever it was. And they just, so they weren't trying to go to the same direction and they weren't trying to, they, and they couldn't build on each other's ideas because they didn't consider what one person threw out to be getting them closer to the end goal. And so there just wasn't a lot of collaboration and people ended up fighting for their own ideas as opposed to building on each other's ideas. So everything that we do is really trying to first set the ground on what are we trying to accomplish together and make sure that when a good idea comes out that the others in the room want to build on it as opposed to fight for their own idea. Love it. That's great. Thanks, Dan. Um, I'm curious like more about um, if you can maybe touch on how you identify, you know, new opportunities. Um, in addition to that, when you find something that works, um, do you, is there any concern about running that same campaign across, you know, all of your game, all of your games, right? And that, and that digital ad and that marketing, um, you know, do you, if something's really successful, do you want to pinpoint it into, you know, certain games that you feel like need more help selling tickets? So we'd love to know more about just like how you go about identifying, you know, these new types of initiatives and experiences and, and your digital marketing ads. And, you know, if there is, a concern there of, you know, having them be too redundant through your season. So I'll go back to that creative process. Um, for, for, for me, I think that, I think one of the most fundamental things in the way that marketing works now, right. With in, in the digital and social media age is everything has to start with two steps that set up, you know, are people going to be interested in this? So it starts with me for research and we are a very data driven group. But it really, the next step is kind of, you know, is insights and the gap in between the research and the insights is curiosity. I think is probably the most, 
um, important attribute that, I, that you can have in a marketer today is, hey, what is working, but then being able to translate into why through curiosity. So research insights, then brainstorming. Uh, so we don't just jump in a room and start brainstorming. But I, to me, that is the creative process that we try to apply to everything that we do. Uh, but how do we do it is, you know, it's, it's like we said there, like, this click-through rate worked really, really well, or we saw this thing, we, there, we got a lot of questions on this, or there was a lot of interest in this thing over here, and then trying to peel the layer off and go, okay, what are people actually trying to get to? What, are, what do they want out of this? What is driving that? And so you will never see me just throw a brainstorm on the calendar. We're gonna spend a lot of time trying to get to a hypothesis of what is driving the interest and then I'll get a lot of people in the room and start going, okay, how do we take advantage of what seems to be a natural interest and in this, this type of thing and, and what's driving that. So to answer your question on how we apply these, um, no, 100%, we're not putting these across all 20 of our, our home games. It would be quite honestly exhausting for the staff because we want it to be a very personalized and memorable experience. So one of the things that we do is you know, once we know what kind of what the order is going to be on the T-shirts and how many people are going to be at the games, we kind of have limits on all this stuff. We, we we have a group of people like box up and personalize the boxes. So when people come in the arena, they'll check in and they'll pick up their personalized box. It will have like their VIP wristband, their T-shirts and any other info or things that they they have in the package. And so we try to make it as custom to what their order was as, as possible. But if we try to do that, especially with the size of our staff here, you know, for 20 games, um, that would be that would be very exhausting. So we we basically set a target of about six games a year where we know we're going to need some help, and this has been the best driver of of uh, incremental ticket sales against those games that we have. That's great. Thanks, Dan. Um, one last question for you. Um, yeah, I just love that data plays such a such a role uh, in those decision making. Um, I don't know if you can touch on a little bit of like how FIVO, um, you know, helps you be more nimble, right? Lean yeah. in your operations, whether or not it's on the ground or, or how you facilitate, you know, your, your digital marketing ads, um, how the FIVO platform can, can help you there. Yeah. 1000%. I, I think the biggest thing was how easily it, it, it embeds into our existing e-commerce experience and, and, and actually enhances it, right? We can't outside of FIVO, we're not really taking payments on our site. So the, our alternative is to drive straight into Ticketmaster. And that's great for people who want to see, you know, uh, we'll use the big names right now, Caitlin Clark or Angel Reese on a Friday. It's it's not working for some of our other games that are on a Tuesday against somebody that, that where, where there's not that marquee matchup. So to be able to keep them in our environment, to be able to customize a UI UX experience around that game or that, that experience that we're building, keep them on our site. We get all that retargeting data as well, which we're leveraging heavily on the paid side. And then quite honestly, there's two numbers that come out of right now. The, let's take this, this daughter date night experience, for instance, but we'll, I think we'll have another one here soon. Um, that, that is, there's two numbers that really help us and that FIBO is helping us a ton with. One, is the that is the straight sales right the the number of ticket sales that we're getting out of it and our ticket team and our marketing team can all see that very very quickly so it's kind of a conversion rate play but the other one is it's helping us tremendously on the uh, the return on ad spend that we're getting because again we're able to keep them in our own environment we get all of that data on what's happening on our site and and quite honestly and, and we will event we are also now starting to move towards enterprise which i think will give us even more data but just the simplicity of adding this and making this look and feel like our brand, like they're staying on our platform, that's easy to purchase because they're keeping a button that keeps them on that same page. Um, and then, and so just that natural integration into our e-commerce experience and what it is immediately done, what that that ease in our e-commerce experience has done for the number of tickets it's sold. And then on the same side, like we're basically, because we're trying to reach new people with this, it's that return on ad spend on the paid social side. So that's why we're not doing a lot of in marketing or in arena marketing for this. And we're only lightly touching on it from a, from an email perspective as well with like past buyers, but we're really trying to get first time buyers into the arena. So we're going after them with like a broad targeting in, in Atlanta on paid social. That's great. Thank you so much, Dan. Absolutely. Um, and lastly, wanted to, um, uh, introduce you all to, to Chris and Flexwork Sports. So uh, specifically here, you know, talking about driving incremental revenue with at venue add-ons. Uh, if, if you all get a chance, tech, check out Flexwork Sports online. Um, they do such a good job at the way they organize 
online, all of the different camps uh, across the country. Um, but um, Chris, if you can just jump in and, and give a quick summary, um, you know, we'll we'll start there. Well, not only will I jump in and, and give a quick summary, but I just got to say this to the to those men and women who are currently professionals and or students or master's programs right now, whatever walk of life you currently on that are joining this webinar, you know, I graduated with a history degree. I don't know where it is. Uh, I wanted to be a history teacher and I got lucky within the world of pro and amateur sports to be on this forum with not only FIBO professionals, but to be here with Connor from Mississippi State and Dan with the Atlanta organization, the, the WNBA. These are, these are outlets and educational opportunities that, man, I can only salivate over wishing I had these back in the day. I'm street smart. I was never the book smart type. But to have forums like this, incredible. Um, but Eric, for, for you to, to introduce Flexwork Sports in that matter, thank you very much. Uh, you know, the owner and founder of Flexwork Sports, Forrest West, um, he's created a, a brand that was meant to pioneer and be a unique differentiation from what existed out there within other grassroots youth camp, brand development, marketing environments. And, you know, uh, when him and I joined forces to create this perfect storm that is now Flexwork Sports to where we're now globally celebrated as A, B, C, D, whatever, we had to find a tool, a resource, a partner that helped us not only scale, but improve the culture within our tribal atmosphere. You know, throughout this call, we're talking about external sales. We're talking about um, on-site activation and, and verticals and buckets, which is the game we play. And uh, I just want to make sure that I also applaud how FIVO has stepped forward. We talk about incremental revenue and add-ons, but it's the infrastructure. It's the cultural infrastructure that FIVO has been able to fuel. We already had a fire. The fire was burning bright, but FIVO already gave, uh, FIVO gave us that log to put in the fire that just doesn't extinguish. It is constantly just keeps adding fuel to the fire, creating a blaze. So, you know, when I look at how boots on the ground within our on-site camp environments, this is much more than just a ticket sale. This is much more than a pre-admission ticket that allows campers to step foot within the lines and enjoy a day of play, learning and interaction with a, play, a pro athlete or college athlete. The step back I'm going to take to tell you how we get to the add-ons, to tell you how we get to the incremental revenue, is by having a happy workforce, by having a tribal atmosphere, a cultural environment where, you know what, the tools and resources you're equipping with, equipping them with, make their life easy. FIVO has been able to take away the walls that departmentalize a marketing team, a sales team, um, an intern, uh, boots on the ground, door-to-door -door team an operations team, C-level, whatever. It has taken down all these walls and has created a dashboard and platform that now all allow us in one culture, one environment to live off and breathe the vitals that are critical to the, the execution of our business, which is that day of camp operation where our job is to upgrade lives. The ticket is like Willy Wonka's golden ticket to get into the environment, but it is the technology that FIVO provides that allows us to fuel um, and serve and support that audience. For instance, you know, uh, my amazing colleagues on this panel have been talking about, you know, the, the audience, have been talking about the impressions, have been talking about um, the, the a la carte of offerings. Well, well, how do you put that in front of people the day of an event in a tasteful manner? That is not force feeding. That is not thinning out your grassroots staff operation to where you have one person at the beginning of the line, one in the middle of the line, and another in the back just trying to meet in the middle, making sure they speak to everyone. Well, this past month alone, uh, FIVO has been side by side with us and has been part of April statistics that are just, uh, I would like to think, pioneering a new movement. You know, we've had over 5,000 plus ticket sales in the month of April. We've had about $1 million uh, in ticket revenue. That is just pre-admission tickets, not even counting upgrade revenue, which is roughly just under uh, $450,000 for the month of April. Now you think about that. You think about that. How does that fuel business? But most importantly, how does that change lives? Well, 
FIBO statistically has been part of, you know, 27,000 plus mobile application impressions. It has been part of over 5,000 desktop applications. It has been part of 128,000 impressions in the month of April. Now, on site, well, how do we add to the experience of our campers? Well, we wanted a Swiss Army Knife partner. We have experience working with other first-class brands, other first-class uh, first ticket providers where QR codes, uh, now everyone and their mother is doing QR codes. QR codes is great. It adds operational efficiency to getting in the door, on the field, on the court, whatever. But how can we scale the operation? How can we not only just make this about pre-camp and, and on-site square payments, but how can we create the most operationally efficient environment, not only for our staff, but for the campers and the parents, the non-athlete spectators? So the infrastructure has been able to give live data to our operations team. So uh, Forrest West, quite an innovator um, at the table, we came up with these ideas to where now at our, our events, we're using inflatable A-frames that we strategically position amongst our lines that go anywhere from 1,000 to 4,000 deep. And in an efficient manner, check them all within a 60 to 75 minute period. But it is during that time frame, the onsite activation, it, it, it's run ablaze in a controlled manner that, you know what, we could never expect. And it was because of FIVO, um, that Swiss Army knife application that has allowed us to do it. So utilizing the inflatable A-frames, we've been able to put QR codes that allow people, while our staff is checking in and educating them on the enhanced experiences they could add on that day on site, um, we're having our consumers boom, purchase the upgrade and self-educate themselves based on these amazing um, resources and tools that we're strategically placing on our check-in line. And they'll come up and right away show the purchase they made online, QR code scan, they'll get their wristband, an appropriate thing, they'll get their signed autograph picture, their t-shirt, um, they'll be given other color appropriate wristbands that allow them private meet and greets with the athletes and or distinguished guests. It, it's been absolutely incredible. Dan, you used a, a cluster phrase before that uh, I absolutely drew to. I love short, powerful phrases that make you think deep thought, but yet it's, they're, they're two, three word clauses. Energy versus drain. Energy versus drain. The mentors I've had throughout my time, like Mr. Edward DeBarlow, five-time Super Bowl champion, Garrett Shea, uh, and numerous other incredible men and women. This has always been the one that has stuck to me the most. And it comes from Mark Verstegen at Exos and Jeff Sassone, president over at Exos. How do you operate in an energy versus drain environment? Well, FIVO and Flex work within our grassroots space have pioneered something that uh, allows venue add-ons to flow like a, uh, water in a stream. It is creating these visual magnetic uh, resources like the inflatable A-frames and, and inflatable tents that also have educational components on a QR code base that allow the consumer to access everything and make the purchase online without even having a staff member um, hold up any operational check-in process. Um, I'm going to stop talking right there because Eric, I can go on and on and on, but please let's, <laughs> let's pump the brakes and tell me what, which path you want me to go down now. Yeah, that was great. I uh, really appreciate that, Chris. Um, super helpful. Um, yeah. I, I'm just curious you know, if you can touch on maybe how, if we, if we're focusing on some of those add-ons and upgrade experiences that you're kind of surfacing to those attendees, has that evolved much? What are some of the things that you're offering? You know, some of those things that have been successful. And then if perhaps, you know, there's a lot of people on this call that are thinking about, you know, creating their own, maybe their own youth sports camp, or maybe it's like the, the tailgate pregame experience, right? Um, you know, how, you know, FIVO has been helpful in uh, basically executing some of those additional experiences um, that others may be looking to um, build into their events. Well, FIVO's infrastructure and the shared services they provide from customer service to ticket operations um, to customer service Q&A, et cetera, um, have been able to scale our company from an employee of nine to 50 plus in less than two years. 
that 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 is people write books about stuff like that in the grassroots space. Um, but you know what? You, the first part of your question, which ended up going a different path, but the first part of it was how has it helped in our scaling and in operational and what have you? Well, at the time and speed of business, with thousands of, of human beings checking into our educational learning environment, um, then taking the field, it FIVO has allowed us to take these this, this blaze of add-on and incremental sales and upgrades, but it has made our operations team more responsive. It has allowed them to evolve their plan, which they entered with that morning. They're allowed to evolve it to plan B and plan C based on how on-site sales and the growth of those upgrades are doing. So while sales and revenue and this and that are being monitored and roster size, the fluctuation of it is being monitored, operationally, it has allowed our staff to create the ultimate first-class experience at the speed of business. Because we may enter the field that morning and have, just for simple math, 50 upgrades. 50 upgrades, let's just say the upgrade is a picture with a pro athlete, getting an autographed picture of the pro athlete having a private meet and greet with the pro athlete, having an offensive defensive rep versus the pro athlete, like it's schoolyard football and you're just there, you know, playing with your favorite pro athlete. I mean, it's an incredible moment in experience. The word we use throughout this call experience to witness. Well, we enter with 50, but via all these great resources that we have on the check-in line via the efficiency that the FIVO technology rewards us as operators, well, all of a sudden that 50 becomes 150 upgrades. Well, that's a lot of time that all of a sudden on the agenda wasn't there. It allows our operators, our camp generals, our field generals, our HQ, our, our check-in operators, on-site sales managers, et cetera, to work as a cohesive unit using the Swiss Army Knife platform and dashboard FIVO presents to evolve our plan. So every time we go into an environment, FIVO allows us to customize the agenda based on the moment, based on the amount of enhanced experiences that, um, you know, our, our add-on sales are creating. So, Eric, do, do you think as I speak out loud and uh, I speak strongly and passionately and quickly, that's just the New York and Jersey in me, <laughs> do you think our, our spectators and our participants right now, you think they're digesting and absorbing that, just the, the, the power of how this is not just a revenue generator, it just doesn't help with add-on, whether you're a former pro athlete who wants to start a, a training program in your local park, or you know what, you're a brand within our niche who wants to be side-by-side -side competitor with us on a global level. It, it's, it's a scaling technology. It's a scaling technology that allows you to grow at the speed of revenue and add-on sales. There's nothing more operationally devastating than a plan that changes the day of. FIVO allows the operational plan to evolve and scale at the speed of business. And that's something that the great first class brands of Eventbrite and, and SI Tickets and others in my journey, um, they provided great platforms, great data, highly recommend them. We never say a negative thing about them, but you know, we're, we're just in a different age of pioneering something new right now. And uh, this is much more than admission tickets these days. I'm going to add one thing to what Chris said. The, the, the words scale and speed often go together very quickly. And I'm, I'm a big believer in, in rodeo, I call it, uh, return on time investment. And one of the best ways to not waste time is to get, get out of bad decisions quickly, get out of things that aren't working quickly and not have staff working against things that aren't working. And they say in the typical typical sales process, it can take two weeks to go through the process and really understand, you know, what kind of the, what the results are. We're not, you know, we're not making decisions on these types of packages like that. We've There's a lot of things that we've rolled out that I'm not showing you today because they didn't work, but we got out of them quickly because we saw pretty quickly that, the, hey, there's something off. Either it's the advertising, there's something wrong in the on the site in the UI UX, and we've either got to fix it or get it out of the system. And, and so we're, you know, I think, you know, the biggest jump from 2022 to 2023 is we had a, a better bank of things that we knew that we were working with and starting and just putting more time against those as opposed to doing as much of the testing, testing and iterating that we were doing in 2022, which we still do. But but we now have more reliable things and a lot of more data behind certain areas where we know we can invest and make them better and get things sold faster. Dan, I'll tell you what, air high five to you, brother. That That is some exceptional stuff. And 
you know, talk about, you know, when you talk about your background, I hope everyone was hanging off every syllable of that because that stuff right there, you don't learn in books. That stuff right there that you got to be on the front lines, failing and succeeding each and every day. And that, that, was, that was verbal gold, what you just put out there. You got, if you're leading staffs and you're watching them flail and spend time against things that aren't working, that is one of the most frustrating experiences you can have as a leader. And that is my biggest pet peeve. So yeah, kudos, Chris. I, 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 I can tell you've got a lot of that too, but it's to be able to make decisions quickly on what's working and what's not is probably one of the absolute most important things uh, that people can do as they grow through their careers and, and just wasting time on things that don't work is, is one of the biggest tragedies. Well said. And uh, here are my final 60 seconds before tagging Eric and team back in, you know, with children, just like uh, my, my kids baseball practice yesterday, we were talking about spontaneity. I take, I take a ball and I throw it at you. You automatically catch it. You don't let it just hit you and roll down. You, you catch it. Why, why do you catch it? Because you know what? You've been taught to be spontaneous and you're taught when it comes at you, boom, you react. Well, that's what FIBO has made us on the front lines of business. It has allowed us to spontaneously adapt and overcome to, to what the waves of add-ons and uh, additional tickets and experiences, uh, the day of our event. It, it has made our infrastructure of employees happier. The culture is... Listen, there always will be stress in anything we do in life. That That's a fact. No one has the perfect business code of, of, of practice and standard operating procedure. But when you have a partner like Fibo and they're able to culturally enhance the enjoyment, you know, uh, salespeople, the most successful sales teams I've ever had in life were in salespeople. They were former athletes and or military or individuals who just understand sweat equity and, and, and talk. Um, how to inspire, provide structure, education, motivation. People on game days don't want to feel sold. On camp days, they don't want to feel sold. They don't want to feel like, oh my God, I'm about to sign my house away. They want to be educated. They want to be well-informed. And that's what FIBO has done. FIBO has allowed us to, with this technology, to inform the consumers and let them know in a gentle way, this is how you can enhance your child's experience. And with the technology and the add-ons day of and the QR codes, this and that, when they come up to us, they're just met with a smile and they're met with the, 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 the Willy Wonka's golden ticket to take access to a field and have a moment that, you know what, not many get to experience. So um, I'll stop right there. And Eric, where do you want to segue from there? Yeah, Chris, that was, that was phenomenal. Thank you. Um, you know, we have a couple minutes here. I um, wanted to kind of highlight, you know, some key takeaways. And then if we have a time for a question or two, we'll take that. Um, you know, just love the conversation and, and how innovative you all have been. You know, hopefully you feel like FIVO is that innovative partner alongside you. We're, we're constantly developing new features to our platform on enterprise uh, and constantly iterating on and thinking about how we can help you all, you know, sell, create new experiences and, and revenue channels in your, in your own business. You know, a couple of those smaller things, you know, now on the add-on functionality on, on FIVO Enterprise, you can add in images, right? You can add in a drop-down for shirt sizes. Um, that's a, a part of our product that we're going to continue to evolve on to you know, help our partners find new revenue streams, right? Or the custom fields, uh, Chris, that you have at your camps now that you can do dynamic custom fields. So if someone selects three tickets, they're yeah. putting in their kid's name three times. Game changing. We're constantly evolving our, our, our platform. Um, and so hopefully you all feel that, you know, um, you know, you guys have that partner in, in, in innovating alongside you. Um, so, you know, in recap, you know, uh, wanted to, you know, the key takeaways are, you know, utilizing the data, uh, innovation and, and infrastructure to open new revenue streams uh, with success and, and how to do that, you know, work within the entire organization, right? Um, Dan, you hit on this a lot, like ensuring that, you know, a lot of these initiatives are successful. It needs that buy-in across multiple departments within your organization, you know, utilizing data to find new and unique opportunities, you know, understanding your clients, what drives that engagement um, will allow you to find those hidden gems and new initiatives and then driving incremental revenue through um, you know, your infrastructure with that solid infrastructure, you're able to, you know, execute in real time add-ons with, pre with precision and, and driving new revenue. So wanted to kind of like highlight some of those um, 
and we can kind of move right in, uh, you know, to any any questions um, if we have any in the in the next minute here. Doesn't look like we do. Everyone's stunned. Well, I, I wouldn't say the word stunned. I would like to think they are intellectually overwhelmed. Um, and I, I will say this. I've done the minor league ticket sales and suite sales and, you know, door to door sponsor acquisitions. I've done them all from the Brooklyn Cyclones of single A baseball to, you know, your your uh, seven, eight figure mega type deals. And at the end of the day, when people hold a ticket, they want an experience. They're there to go for an experience. Anything that enhances their experience, they want to be known about. They want to be informed about. They don't want to be sold on. And I find that if you have the proper magnetic visual collateral pieces and you have the proper mindset with your boots on the ground team and staff, whether sales and or operational, it's amazing how FIVO technology and the app complement the experience, not the sale, the experience. It just happens to be the sales produce a big number in some spreadsheet, right? But our job, everyone on here, Connor, Dan, myself, and our beloved teammates and colleagues, we're experience experts. We upgrade lives experts. And it just happens to turn into sales at the end of the day. And having FIBO side by side with us to not only manage the channels of that data, but to knock down the walls and take every staff member from an intern to the owner and share all the vitals of that so everyone can make well-informed, spontaneous decisions the day of. Well, there's your experience, ladies and gentlemen. Love it. Thank you, Chris. Um, we're up against time. Connor, Dan, Chris, thank you so much for, for joining, offering your insight um, and detailing everything that you guys are doing at your organizations. Everyone that's on the call, thank you for joining. Be on the lookout for June's webinar, um, you know, coming in the weeks ahead, and we're looking forward to, to joining you all in the next one. Thank you. Thank you again. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.